Hello and welcome to this uh, special program. In this program, we'll be discussing a number of studies that um, have been conducted as regards information that uh, the government is using uh, in as far as uh, COVID-19 is concerned. My name is Chimoma Mangazi, and uh, in the first place, I would like to introduce to you our panel, uh, uh, the people that uh, we have here that will be discussing these issues with. Uh, in the first place, I would like to introduce to you Betty Chumbu, who is the development, uh, is coming from Development Communications Trust DCT. Welcome to the program, Betty. Thank you so much. And uh, we have Bodwin Chiamaka, who is uh, the region uh, program manager for uh, the project from Hivo, as I would say. Yes. Welcome to the program. Thank you. And uh, we as well have uh, Chimwemwe Livata, who is uh, Women's Legal Resource Centre, uh, uh, is a representative from uh, uh, Women's Legal Resource Centre, Wolek. Welcome, Chimwemwe. Thank you. And uh, as well, uh, we have Alexander Mboma, uh, who is uh, a researcher. Uh, they are the ones that conducted the research, uh, the studies that we'll be discussing in the program. Welcome, Alexander. Yeah, in the first place, uh, Bodwin, uh, give us a background to this project. What is it all about? Thank you. Well, uh, PROTECT is an acronym, mm -hmm. meaning protecting rights, openness, transparency, enhancing civic transformation. Mm -hmm. Now, um, it's a program that is uh, being managed by four international organizations. We have Article 19, a London-based organization. We have uh, Internews, a Washington-based organization. We also have International Center for Nonprofit Law, ICNL, which is also a Washington-based organization. And then you have HIVOS. Mm -hmm. HIVOS is a, a Dutch organization based in The Hague. Mm -hmm. But it's all over the world, including here in Malawi. So it's a consortium of partners implementing the program in three countries. Mm -hmm. In Miema, Asia, unfortunately that's where it's been taken over by the military, mm -hmm. and then Kenya and Malawi. Mm -hmm. And uh, from the HIPO side, I'm the global program manager, mm -hmm. overseeing the program up to in Miema, uh, Kenya, mm -hmm. and here in Malawi. Mm -hmm. So we have four activity streams. Mm -hmm. The first activity stream, we call it uh, legal and policy. The program that will be supporting uh, favorable laws for the civic space of people in who make negative narratives about vulnerable groups in society and are stigmatized. Mm -hmm. Then the final one is about the media, trying to support the media to be truly independent, so that they are they are they, they we we want to help support the media to come up with models mm -hmm. that can help them to be truly, truly independent so that they can talk about anything. Mm -hmm. No fear for commercial reprisals like advertisements, mm -hmm. government sponsorship like through advertisements again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these are the four. There are five strands, but for now these are the four. Mm -hmm. So why are we here? We are here because although we are focusing on those, but when in April, uh, the first case was discovered in Malawi. Mm -hmm. What followed was the government uh, coming up with a, a state of national disaster, and then there were restrictions. Mm -hmm. There were a number of policies and measures, but also decisions that were made at that time, mm -hmm. which shrank the civic space, freedoms and the like. But that was done in order to protect the right to people's, I mean, the right to life mm -hmm. for people. However, it was not very clear whether government was making those decisions based on facts or varied data. Mm -hmm. So we embarked on a study. Actually, there were four studies, and one of the studies was an in-depth analysis into data government was using uh, to make decisions. Mm -hmm. So we engaged Gonzalez to do the study, and today it's we are disseminating, it's the first time that we are dis disseminating the, 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 the results uh, of the study. Great. Perhaps, um, Alexander, you want to share with us 
what exactly were the findings as Baldwin uh, is putting it yeah. was government making these decisions um, without the necessary data without the necessary information to be putting such policies in place yeah well so i think for a start let me give you some of the rationales that he was uh, decided to back on the study mm -hmm. so as he has put it government is supposed to make data-driven decisions mm -hmm. when they're saying what well, doing these interventions mm -hmm. what does it do mean to actually do those interventions so one of the the objectives of the study was to actually source and uh, examine the data that the government was actually using at that time back in april to actually come up with interventions to manage the COVID-19. And the second one was to, to scrutinize actually the disclosure of data that government is putting up across to the public to say how that data is, is coming to the public and the, how government you know, is open to, you know, for, for the public to access that data. Mm -hmm. And the last uh, rationale that we actually focused on was to scrutinize the forecasting models. If you remember, Back then, there was a model the government actually used to actually come up with the, the projections for the COVID numbers, you know, the, the, the cases. Mm -hmm. So we're also trying to scrutinize if that model that they used was actually, you know, the right model and what actually, you know, the implications of that. So basically, our findings, we, 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 we discovered that actually the data is available. Mm -hmm. However, I think in terms of access to the public is not... Uh, were you know accessible, mm -hmm. and that, at the same time you are, you 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 ask very bluntly to say did government use data? So I can say yes or no. Mm -hmm. So the government the data that government may have used to come up with those interventions were was not actually very comprehensive. Mm -hmm. So they used some of the data was actually used, but some of the interventions we realized that they were actually you know just copied and pasted. You know mm -hmm. we actually didn't use our data here. Mm -hmm. The data was not speaking or the interventions were not speaking to the data that we had at that particular time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For example, the issues of, um, of lockdowns that were actually there, you know, we had a lot of questions that were asked mm -hmm. to say, is it necessary? Mm -hmm. Where have this been driven from? Mm -hmm. So that's one of the, the findings that we found. And the another thing was the, the data that is actually available is also underutilized in the sense that the, I think government mostly has just the last finding was uh, the data that is uh, actually coming through the MOH, through the Public Health um, Institute, was uh, coming in late chunks. Uh -huh. So, for example, if the government is displaying through the Ministry of Health that today we have got 10 cases, mm -hmm. you realize that those 10 cases are actually not happening on that particular day. So mm -hmm. someone in Lumpi who has been diagnosed on a Monday, that data goes to the central office on a Wednesday, and they're posting on a Wednesday to say we have got 10 cases, which mm -hmm. most often was not actually the case. Mm -hmm. So those are actually some of the findings that were actually, you know, uh, discovered through through the study that we did. And um, I should say that through our methodology, we talked to a few guys, mm -hmm. the, you know, the key informants that we that are actually involved in the implementation of the, the COVID response. Mm -hmm. So, you know, our partners, you know, people working in the Tissot hospitals. So, yeah, and that, I think I should leave it there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. 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 Uh, but perhaps um, uh, let's come to you, Betty. Yeah. Uh, what, what is uh, the reflection of um, what Alexander is saying here? Uh, there was information, but perhaps access to it was a problem. Uh, what was your experience engaging communities uh, in the country? Basically, we would say that as DCT, we've done a lot in terms of COVID response in the country. Mm -hmm. And our experience, as uh, he has pointed it out, there's been a lot of resistance. You can agree with me at first when the first COVID case was announced, mm -hmm. everybody was like, this doesn't belong to us poor people in the rural areas. Mm -hmm. This is for those that are in urban setting. Mm -hmm. Why? It's because all the cases, almost 90% of the cases were for the people that are from urban, mm -hmm. right? And the model and the channel that was used to present that particular information mm -hmm. was targeting those that are in urban. You would mm -hmm. see that it was only um, the MOH a platform that was used to share the information mm -hmm. was an internet 
Mm. The question is how many people in the rural areas do access, access internet? internet? Mm -hmm. Do they have the resources? Mm -hmm. So data was there, but accessibility was the challenge. Mm -hmm. So our experience was there was high resistance mm -hmm. from the community to accept the existence of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And even participation of them in decision making was also another challenge that we discovered when we are implementing our projects in, in the district that we were mm -hmm. when we were doing COVID-19 response. would we'll give an example of uh, this particular case at uh, Bwaira mm -hmm. Hospital, mm -hmm. where they decided, government decided to close the fistula center. Mm -hmm. Was that decision based on informed data, mm -hmm. for example? Was that really a right decision to be made at that time, considering that women were accessing the service at that particular center? So you could really see that there was a bit of a battle mm -hmm. between the general populace that we were reaching out to with the messages and those that were making the policies at that particular level. Mm -hmm. So to bring in people at the same level and to say this is our issue and we need to deal it together, mm -hmm. there wasn't really that much coordination mm -hmm. but even informed with data. Mm -hmm. Hence when you go into the community to say that there is COVID and that it could backfire on you to say you guys from the cities are the ones that you're bringing COVID here. No one here has died with that. Mm -hmm. Who can you tell us that has died or has contracted the pandemic mm -hmm. in our village mm -hmm. up until you give us evidence that so and so is part of this mm -hmm. then we'll be able to do this. But it was you know, to follow all those preventive measures, it wasn't easy mm -hmm. because it was like we are fighting a battle with the people that are not even into the decision making. So mm -hmm. that has been really our challenge when we were doing the COVID response in the district, mostly in the rural setting, hard to reach. Mm -hmm. We were in, in Likoma. Mm -hmm. There was a case in Likoma, if you can remember very well, when the first COVID case was announced. Mm -hmm. There was running battles between health workers in that particular family, mm -hmm. when a case was reported in their family, mm -hmm. to them they were saying, no, just because Likoma had not had any case, you're just importing the cases here. Just because there are funders that have come, there are people that are doing this COVID awareness, and we happen to be in that particular area mm -hmm. when that issue was happening, but the case was there. So, you know, some decisions, even the um, contact tracing, Mm -hmm. kind of process at what point were the community engaged mm -hmm. even the decision to say this is a process that we're going to do the contact tracing mm -hmm. you know there we found that there was really a mismatch of you know the availability of data and information to counter such to counter you know such cases ha, has the situation improved from the time we registered the first case of covid to present Improved in what sense? Is it is it As adherence to the previous communities closed and will close for this particular period? Mm -hmm. That you would really see everybody is is not sure why we are closing schools for three days mm -hmm. or one week or two weeks. Where are we basing such decisions? Mm -hmm. Right? So improvement is there in terms of awareness. Mm -hmm. But following the preventive measures, yeah something that is subject for another day but the decisions that are being made by those policy makers leaves a lot to be desired mm -hmm. so why we are what we are saying here is let's have decisions that are based on data mm -hmm. that are based on information that every jack and jim has participated in that particular process mm -hmm. because something that it's being imposed on me without that particular engagement that particular you know, participation, I guess there is going to be high resistance in the uptake of that particular message. Speaking of that, Chimamu, we understand you work with communities, you work with women, you work yes. with children, uh, the elderly on uh, a number of social issues. How, how has the impact been on uh, these groups? Uh, there's been a lot of impact, especially because of uh, lack of participation. Mm -hmm in terms of uh, uh, decision-making processes that are, that government has undertaken. Mm -hmm. So you, you might, everyone is aware that the country's population is, uh, the majority are women. But when, when it came to consultation on issues, women were not consulted. Mm -hmm. uh, some will say how they consult women. 
we have women leaders, we have movement, we have a women's manifest movement, which consists of uh, women from various sectors as well as from all corners of the country. Mm -hmm. So the government missed an opportunity uh, by not consulting such women mm -hmm. because they would have been able to make some informed decisions. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, the lockdown which was supposed to take place, that was uh, uh, which HRDC took an injection. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a regard for women's welfare. Because looking at the livelihood of uh, most households, they are supported by women. And uh, that lockdown was going to affect uh, women's earning capacity. Uh, looking at the decision the government made, it was just driven by the number mm -hmm. in the cases. But there was no form of cushion uh, considering the women that would be affected and the children that would be affected. Mm -hmm. And also related to that, there is an issue of uh, children in terms of school. Mm -hmm. School has been closed, I think, twice. Uh, but looking at the basis, looking at the data, mm -hmm. they have, there hasn't been consultations and also looking at the effects that have been there before. Mm -hmm. Because looking at the effects we have for uh, child uh, pregnancy and also exploitation of children concerned that they are just staying at home. Mm -hmm. So in all these areas, you see that there was no proper consultation, yet there were forums that government could have used to consult women as well as children. Mm -hmm. yeah. Borwin, from the discussion, um, it is coming out clear that um, the decisions that government made were not informed decisions based on data. Is it fair to conclude that they were political decisions? The government was making political decisions. Before I get to that, allow me to give you a little more on the findings so that we can justify, mm -hmm. we can be more concrete. Mm -hmm. um, one of the findings was that, uh, of course, also this just to confirm what you were saying, mm -hmm. um, most of the data uh, that government was based on making decisions mm -hmm. was not as tailored to address specific needs mm -hmm. like women, mm -hmm. children, and other groups. Mm -hmm. It was a one size fit oh. all, mm -hmm. which is not proper. Mm -hmm. And then also, you'll find out that he, most of the data is called is superficial data without in-depth analysis. Mm -hmm. Just using, I'm not saying that it's bad, mm -hmm. but um, possibly uh, the Malawi Minister of Health, PHIM, you know, mm -hmm. data. Mm -hmm. Like the data which you know we see every day, yes. and then you make decisions. Mm -hmm. But there is more to it. Mm -hmm. You need to dig deeper, mm -hmm. okay? Data is like a, a gold mine. Mm -hmm. Best data is found when you analyze it deeply. Mm -hmm. And that's when you find, you know, mm -hmm. there is some, some very, very useful, you know, uh, uh, information to use. Mm -hmm. So that superficialness meant either uh, deliberate mm -hmm. or just slackness. Mm -hmm. But if you take me back to that period, obviously that was um, a very difficult on mm -hmm. COVID-19 to shrink the civic space, to close the society. Because this program, Protect, is about shifting the para paradigm from closed societies to open societies, mm -hmm. from shrinking civic space to, you know, open civic space. Mm -hmm. And of course, COVID came with its own problem, and the government policies were meant to protect people, but also there was a deliberate effort to catch on the situation, mm -hmm. you know, taking advantage of the situation. Mm -hmm. So, and that, this is why it's very important to say, is this decision based on varied data? Mm -hmm. Is this decision based on facts? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think we are now living in days where when public institutions are providing information, mm -hmm. they should also explain why. Mm -hmm. Usually they just explain the what, and who. Mm -hmm. The why lacks, the hows largely lacks, mm -hmm. and that's where suspicion comes in now. Mm -hmm. Because we don't know why certain things, you know, are being done. So yes, to answer your question, I think somebody was cashing in on that, mm -hmm. but uh, that's not only the, the only reason. Mm -hmm. The other reasons would be inability by suppliers of data to use data uh, fully. Mm -hmm. to utilize available data. Even though it's made available, open data, the findings are that the data is made available, but there were cases also where there was resistance mm -hmm. to providing the data. Why resist? Why deny people data? Mm -hmm. That means 
they were covering some truth. Mm -hmm. Maybe there was an inconsistent mm -hmm. inconsistency between the decisions and the facts. Mm -hmm. So you keep, you cover the data, you hide it so people don't know that uh, something is wrong or this is the truth. Mm. Uh, Alexander, I saw you nodding to what Baldwin was, was saying and I would like to take you to the findings, the, the, the issue of the findings. What were some of the scopes that uh, were overlooked? You touched on um, uh, perhaps not looking at the population, the actual population where, uh, which has been worst hit by the pandemic. What, were, what are some of the scopes that should have been there uh, when interpreting the figures of COVID that we were getting? So I think let me give an example, for example, the test kits mm -hmm. or the testing centers. Mm -hmm. We know our population is actually divided based on the geographical, you know, allocation and yeah. stuff. So what was happening actually is, for example, Mangoji has a bigger density population mm -hmm. compared, to, for example, maybe to Purikoma or Rumpi or, you know, Mm -hmm. But you, 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 you find that the government is opening up testing centers and they just say we are, we are opening two, two test centers in each district. Mm -hmm. So that, okay, so meaning to say people of Mangochi who have less access mm -hmm. to those two, you know, we don't actually see through to say why are we doing these things and we, we sometimes don't even have time to reflect back. I'll mm -hmm. give you maybe the trending issue now the vaccines. Mm -hmm. we, we all know who are supposed to receive the vaccines. Mm -hmm. The old people, you know, people that have got underlying conditions. But who has actually questioned to say who are actually receiving that vaccine? Mm -hmm. So we realize that at the end of the day that we have vaccinated only a small population. The youth. The youth mm -hmm. who actually don't necessarily need it. Mm -hmm. So by the time we'll be saying, oh, what have we done? It'll be too late. So that's why I was saying, when the government is making these interventions, you know, these monitoring, you know, activities, they have to actually be fed by the data. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that we also found was the, the national response plan. We, we actually didn't have a monitoring and evaluation tool, mm -hmm. particularly in terms of uh, the resources. Mm -hmm. we, I think we all know how many billions were pumped in there, but uh, at the end of the day, we didn't know how much that has, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. what has it bought or how has it actually been used. Mm -hmm. so, such monitoring elements that are actually missing, mm -hmm. and these are what we're saying, okay, can we improve on, on these areas? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Betty, can you, can you tell us what, what are the response mechanisms that the government has put in place and uh, how effective are such mechanisms? The response in terms of... Understanding the uh, uptake of the messages from the communities on COVID-19. Yeah, because in terms of um, what he's saying, in each and every programming, like if we are doing an SPCC programming, for example, where you're promoting the behaviors, mm -hmm. you really need to have an m and &E, how you're going to monitor back the response, right, from the people that you're sending the message to. Mm -hmm. So that is also another element which we are saying, okay, did government really have an m and &E plan mm -hmm. in place? whereby they will be able to see how the messages are being developed. Because if you can see, everybody went flat out mm -hmm. to send the COVID-19 messages, but when did we ever sit down and reflect mm -hmm. on how the messages have been received by the people that we are uh, sending the message to? One, yes, partners, we are there in, in almost all the districts. But yes, the district meetings, we are there. Mm -hmm. But did we really need have the concrete answers from those meetings to say the message that we have sent they have really reached to the people mm. one mm. have people changed two what next should we do because mm. even the funding window if you could see if you could remember is it 30 million every district mm -hmm. that they were receiving the district councils yeah. where were we basing those amounts mm. right that district x should be given this amount and we are increasing or we are decreasing the allocation for the COVID-19 response activities. So these are some of the things that we are saying, okay, yes, the responses were there, but were they really based on the very data, as we are saying, mm -hmm. information that you can say, okay, District W, you were given this amount, this time around, we are adding this because of A, B, C, D, E, mm -hmm. um, or else it was everyone. Yeah. equal size, yeah. equal amount given to equal districts. Mm -hmm. So you would really see that, yes, a lot has been done, 
but we could have done better mm -hmm. if really we had the information, the valid data mm -hmm. to partners mm -hmm. in the district to send COVID-19 activity, I mean COVID-19 messages. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if really information was there, mm -hmm. that everybody was part of it, or information was there, mm -hmm. but accessibility one, but even engagement, to us our cry is engage us all mm -hmm. when these decisions ought to be made. Mm -hmm. Let people know why certain things are happening at that particular time. Mm -hmm. The updates, the daily updates for example, mm -hmm. could we point out how many school going children were there, mm -hmm. primary school going children were there, mm -hmm. which led to government to make a decision that we are closing schools. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the things that we are getting. Then we had also no answers mm -hmm. on how such decisions we are arriving at. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when I saw you nodding to what Betty was saying, uh, that uh, we should have done better. But one would ask to say, we've seen one can claim that uh, the government is on top of issues uh, because we've seen the figures uh, going down, the number of infections going so it does not reflect the current situation, mm -hmm. but there are lessons we can draw from there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we've seen also, I think we have learned the hard way, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. we have learned the hard way, things that we should have prevented, mm -hmm. we had. Uh, you saw what happened during the second wave. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Dibala, one of our researchers, argued that it's not the second wave. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just because maybe as an infection we were too the, the Our inability to, you know, epidemics can be predicted. Mm -hmm. These epidemics, you know, if you ask epidemiologists, they can be predicted a thousand years before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are models to prevent it, you know. But it's the same issue of not our being serious to use the information or data that we have. Now, to come to that, those lessons that we learn in a hard way mm -hmm. honestly have brought about improvements mm -hmm. during this period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for example, if you don't have a proper monitoring mechanism or a response or feedback loop, mm -hmm. then the public takes over using social media. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and the, the, you know, so government begins to respond to public outcry mm -hmm. and the decisions are popular decisions mm -hmm. not based also on what on data mm -hmm. it's a good thing in terms of perception mm -hmm. but on facts reality it may not be the best mm -hmm. and that's where we also lose it however the public outcry the demands they were making fortunately have resonated to government has responded to that mm -hmm. and in a way but we can also commend the current government without being political mm -hmm. uh, in that they did quite a good job in, mm -hmm. terms of, in terms of planning and response. I think it, a little more data was used during that time. It was based on facts. Mm -hmm. And the monitoring has also been there. You can even see that even in terms of reporting, the updates, we changed. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about positivity rates mm -hmm. and, you know, putting down, or, you know, all these figures, mm -hmm. which means they knew what they were doing, or we know, now know and understand what we have to do. Mm -hmm. Even the president yesterday was using figures. Mm -hmm. We are now at this percentage. If we can reach at 5%, everybody now is busy with data, mm -hmm. which is a positive thing. Mm -hmm. If we can reach at 5%, yeah then we can relax based on facts and the data available. Mm -hmm. For me, I think I can take that and give quite a higher percentage of, you know, uh, demonstration that if you use data, if you use facts, you can plan well, you can make valid, reliable, responsible policies and decisions. Mm -hmm. But what we have to improve on is being proactive not to wait public outcry, mm -hmm. even in terms of accountability of the resources is quite low, mm -hmm. you know, where the government is now panicking and then, you know, there is, a, you know, you make decisions on popular view, making decisions in panic. We can do better mm -hmm. because if we can have a good tracking system, mm -hmm. good accountability mechanisms, 
good monitoring system, robust ones, mm -hmm. and then we have data based on all those decisions. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, uh, speaking of uh, the uh, aspects that you've touched on, mm -hmm. perhaps Alexander, you want to tell us uh, what are the recommendations in your in your studies as regards um, the government making decisions from uh, informed informed by data. Yeah. So, I mean, one of the key and the outstanding recommendation is government with partners, mm -hmm. they should be able to use data. Mm -hmm. We have data every day coming in. Let's use that data to come up with our decisions. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense to throw just the ball all over and then we, we realize what you did actually hit. I've given you an example of the vaccines. Mm -hmm. Let's not wake up realize that only mm -hmm. youth have received the vaccines. Mm -hmm. Or let's not, you know, realize to say we, we have sent a lot of billions to motive of doing things. Mm -hmm. So I think when, because I can give you an example, even us, when we're inquiring some of the data, particularly the finance data, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're having resistance mm -hmm. from the public officers, actually. Mm -hmm. They were, so you're like, ah, you guys, this is a public information, this is public <laughs> money. We just need to get this information to actually, you know. So I think that kind of, of, of an approach or an attitude, I think should change. So that we should actually, you know, improve access to data, you know, as I put it, we have got, uh, not a long way, but we can do better. Mm -hmm. We can do better, yeah. You, you, you are a citizen. Yes. Your, your, your team, I believe, is made of citizens of Malawi. Exactly. Yeah. Why would you not be responsible citizens and provide that information to the government when they were making such decisions? Okay, so the government is, is a liberty to use, you know, experts in the field. And mm -hmm. I think one of the things that we also found out was initially these COVID responses were in the hands of politicians. Mm -hmm. And that was a big miss. Mm -hmm. We did use technical people to actually advise the government on how to go about this. Mm -hmm. So we are there. That's why we are actually here. But let, let the government reach out to us and we'll, we'll advise them, you know. We'll, yeah. So we don't want to know why the door that is actually closed. We want it to open and we, we go in. So yeah, mm -hmm. we're just standing on the door. Let them open, then we'll go in and then provide them that data, all these, you know, you know, the, the recommendations and the insights, yeah. Chimame, moving forward, how best can we protect women, children and the elderly uh, in as far as making decisions uh, regarding COVID-19? Uh, first of all, I would recommend dissemination of information mm -hmm. because we have a lot of information flying around but it's mostly suitable for uh, the urban population. Mm -hmm. On social media, on TV, on radio, some of these things, the rural, people in the rural areas cannot access, especially women. Because even if you go to the community, deep, deep in the rural areas, you'd find that if a household, in a household there's a radio, it belongs to the man. Mm -hmm. So he chooses what to listen to. Mm -hmm. And the women may miss out on the information. So they have, government must put initiatives to ensure that women have information. There are many forums within the community. There are village banks, there are women's groups, which they can maybe introduce uh, radio listening clubs mm -hmm. for the women to be able to access the information. That way they may be able to also make informed decisions. Mm -hmm. Because we have to acknowledge that there are some myths flying ar around. Like for example, people, uh, women are, are failing to access health services mm -hmm. for fear that if they go to health institutions, they will be infected with COVID. Mm -hmm. So we may find that maybe uh, essential services like family planning uh, women are failing to access because of fear, because of the lies that are flying around. Mm -hmm. And I would also recommend uh, government to consult stakeholders because the already institutions are experts who work on women's issues. So they can, because these are also doing some research on the effects of COVID. Mm -hmm. So when making their decisions, they should, be, they should also be able to consult like agencies like UN Women. Mm -hmm. We have a Women's Manifesto movement. Such uh, forums may be able to give advice on how government should handle issues relating to women. And uh, after consultations and decisions have been made, I think there's also need to monitor if what was agreed, the decisions that were made are actually being implemented. For example, it's the issue of the vaccine, mm -hmm. which was uh, the priority was the elderly and uh, people with underlying uh, sicknesses. Mm -hmm. But if you go around, if you see on social media, you see that it's young people like me who are accessing. Mm -hmm. And the question is, what about the targeted uh, population? Mm -hmm. What happens to them if they don't access this at uh, this time around? So 
I think that's the, what I'd like to recommend. Mm -hmm. yeah. Betty, what would be the best way moving forward? Well, I think adding to what Achimua said, my recommendation should be the data that is available, disseminate that data. Mm -hmm. Let people have access to that data. Mm -hmm. And even we should also consider the report that um, he was today is sharing mm -hmm. during this particular meeting. Is it in a format that Jack and Jim in the rural community will be able to understand and triangulate what this particular document is? Let it go mm -hmm. and let people get access to that. Mm -hmm. Actually, what the concern that Jimmy has about the vaccine, for example, the current, the hot issue that we have now, mm -hmm. still rings a bell to me to say, who made the decision that this should be the centers? Mm -hmm. The center should be at DHO's office, mm -hmm. at Health Facility X. Mm -hmm. How about people that are, have got the challenges in, they've got different disabilities, mm -hmm. will they be able to access that particular facility? Mm -hmm. What other decision will be made thereafter when you have seen this particular population, the elderly for example, mm -hmm. somebody from hunger Mpanga area in TS Impasse, for example, mm -hmm. if he has to access the vaccine at Shiosha health facility, which is about 10 plus case, mm -hmm. how is that person going to work to that particular area? Mm -hmm. right? So all these, you know, consideration or decisions ought really need to be needs best. Mm -hmm. Not just somebody or me decide to sit and say, here is data anyway, this is a decision that we have made. Mm -hmm. It should be based on participation. Mm -hmm. It should be based on that particular information. Is it really going to respond to the needs of the people that mm -hmm. we are serving? And the information that we have, the data that we have, should be accessible. Mm -hmm. I think that should be my recommendation on the way to move forward. Even the channel of communication, let us be considerate. Mm -hmm. See how best I'm going to respond to community X, community W shouldn't be one show fit or kind of approach. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're going to miss. But with the available data, let us make it available. Bodwin, I'll ask you two questions. What, what is the way forward and um, what's next after uh, you've uh, uh, seen this, this study is being conducted? What would be the next step uh, from here? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, my colleagues here have provided some of the steps we can take, mm -hmm. but perhaps I should start by saying these are very good reports, in my opinion, mm -hmm. and the, the, they can request for these reports from HIVOs, but we are also going to make sure that through our partners like DCT, Warwick, and the others who work with, mm -hmm. they should be made accessible and available. Mm -hmm. We are also going to share with the data suppliers like in the government so that they can, but when they access these reports, they should be able to use the recommendations mm -hmm. which are these reports, that's number one. Number two, uh, maybe from moving from data, because we've talked a lot about data, we should now be able to scale up on what kind of messages are we providing. Mm -hmm. For example, I'll tell you that, have we ever thought why people are reluctant to go to the hospital, even when they have the symptoms of COVID, mm -hmm. and even when they hate that somebody died in their home, mm -hmm. and people are only go to the hospital when they it's, it's now becoming serious. Mm. The reason is because the messaging has emphasized on the symptoms and the prevention. Mm. But people haven't been told that when you have the symptoms, what is happening to your body? Mm -hmm. They think that is privileged information for doctors. Mm -hmm. And when we are talking about data, we mean making complex data accessible, simple. Mm -hmm. Some of these complex medical issues can be simplified for people to understand. For example, if I know that now I have these symptoms, what is happening to my body? You know? And the message is When somebody can do steaming in the home, they can do this. But tell them, 
mapapo anu akuongeka mm-hmm. siku mbili every minute mapapo anu akutani akuongeka mm-hmm. ngati muli ndi underlying conditions if you have underlying conditions you cannot be a damage mm-hmm. but at the same time they will help you to breathe and eventually if you are recovering they will help you to use your lungs again mm-hmm. because they become weak perforated I, i believe mm-hmm. and you need to do some physiotherapy mm-hmm. i'm talking you know from real experiences that i know mm-hmm. so people don't know the only fear that is triggered in people is covid kills mm-hmm. covid is real yes covid is real we know covid is real mm-hmm. but what is happening to my body mm-hmm. i don't know and so the social media conspiracy theories overtake the facts mm-hmm. because these are not provided you know to people if i knew that when i have the symptoms of covid my lungs are speedily being damaged and that the nothing else but going to the hospital will help i would rush mm-hmm. in fact i would push other patients to be the first one to be treated mm-hmm. so i think the next step should be to evaluate what kind of messages based on the facts the data that we have are we giving out mm-hmm. are we also answering some questions are we saying that no this information is only for this group mm-hmm. privileged information no mm-hmm. people now are smart they are clever in fact when we talk about messaging information and data make it complex information complex data accessible mm-hmm. because of time i would have given a model that we use in terms mm-hmm. of data mm-hmm. data number one must be actionable must be accessible mm-hmm. no matter how complex the data even a complicated contract can be simplified mm-hmm. we have civic tech now mm-hmm. you know organizations that are able data must be machine readable very accessible accessible mm-hmm. you know data must, must be reusable so you have already given yes, yes. yes. <laughs> if, if you have used it it has to be what reusable yeah. anyone should be able to reuse that data yeah. mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and and these are the things that uh, we at hivos are promoting mm-hmm. we want to support but um i think if we can do these things that have happened mm-hmm. and be able to use these studies the findings things can improve wonderful uh, i will give you each a minute to give you your concluding remarks a minute to we'll start with you alexander your concluding remarks okay i think in conclusion i can say to the government let's use the data mm-hmm. because i think it will help us avoid a lot of things especially you know the complications that come along with the covid so mm-hmm. we are doing good but we can do better mm-hmm. that's my conclusion yeah. better your concluding remarks. exactly let the data that is available be made accessible to all mm-hmm. so that decisions should be made based on informed deci- uh, informed data and validated data chimwe mm-hmm. your concluding remarks uh, i'd say that uh, government must involve women mm-hmm. we need to women's voice in whatever decisions that um, they are making mm-hmm. yeah since everyone here has not exhausted their minute for concluding remarks <laughs> i'll give you board with two minutes because i know <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll also summarize what has been said i think yes. the most important thing is we have two sides the supply sides mm-hmm. government ministries departments and agencies mm-hmm. that generate data mm-hmm. and then we have this the demand side the users who use data mm-hmm. my appeal is on the supply side make data available mm-hmm. as everyone else has said make that data actionable usable mm-hmm. accessible in formats that people can use do not withhold any other data we have now access to information act mm-hmm. it actually stipulates what kind of data can be kept you know uh, cannot be disclosed but let's make data you know available usable and also on the demand side let us access data the findings are that data is readily available mm-hmm. very av- quite available data in malawi is available open data is available mm-hmm. that's a fact mm-hmm. but is it in usable format is it accessible you know mm-hmm. and do people demand that data do we demand it to mm-hmm. use it so we have to demand that data but as we demand it those who are supplying it must make it available and then finally 
data must be available at all levels. Mm -hmm. It should not be a privilege, a privilege, you know, for few. Mm -hmm. Whether the information the president has, let it make it accessible in the best way to an ordinary citizen. I tell you, if we can do that, if people can have information, mm -hmm. this country can improve. Uh, can, can, can make strides and, you know, progress. Mm -hmm. So let us make data available mm -hmm. at all levels. I know um, we have seen... You have 20 seconds now. Yes, mm -hmm. we, we have seen data being shared, especially on platforms and the like. Mm -hmm. That is good. Mm -hmm. But uh, is it really something that is uh, very helpful? Mm -hmm. Can I say one commendation that I can talk? Go is being shared. The, the, the kind and of data that has to go down, mm -hmm. not only the what or the who, but also the why and the how. Thank you. Thank you very much, Godwin, and thank you to all our panelists for being with us in this program. Thanks. And uh, that's where we leave it in uh, this uh, program. And uh, the message is clear that uh, decisions have to be made based on data, and that data is available and it should be made available to the public as well. My name is Chimo Mangasi. Goodbye.